Hi there, everybody. Welcome back. We are heading to our next session. I have uh, Lane in the back, and uh, she has a pre-recorded session for you guys, which she will introduce herself. And after the session, there's uh, the possibility for questions, and she will be here live to answer all your questions. So I'm going to start this video for you guys, and don't hesitate to ask the questions in the chat. Hey there, good afternoon, and welcome to the session on how to fit Motic in your omnichannel customer journeys. My name is Lynn. I'm a chief marketing at Robsolid, and Robsolid has built an open digital experience platform with Drupal, Mautic, and Unomi as core technologies. We implement it uh, at clients, but we also use it for our internal marketing. So today I will talk about my own experience using Mautic on the Dropsolid website and how we integrate it with other channels. So um, you have marketing automation integrated on your website. You're capturing leads uh, with Mautic forms, you keep track of lead scores, and you send some automated follow-up or nurturing emails. Awesome, great job. But it means you're working with 1% of your total potential audience and you're spending all your efforts on them. How many people do you have in your mailing list? And how many more are out there? The 1%, obviously, that's just guessing. But um, the key to remember is that there is a large potential audience out there that could be interesting to have in your marketing database. People you did not yet convince to subscribe because your website is maybe not appealing enough for them. Um, or because they didn't even get to your website yet. Personalization can make that website experience more relevant and convince more visitors to sign up. So that's maybe the first step uh, you can take away. Also, um, because you can use implicit website behavior to personalize your email content, and that goes far beyond what you can capture and use for segment building inside Nautic. What about those highly interesting visitors that don't read your emails anymore. If they are online on your websites, use personalization, use a chatbot, use whatever you have to grab their attention and make their visits count. And if they're not engaging on your emails, nor do they come to your website anymore, but you still think they're a relevant audience, then the only way is that you pay for them um, to get their attention via ads or, or social ads. And then you can spend your money wisely on that particular audience that you cannot reach otherwise. So the message is go for omnichannel consistency and use the best channel for every visitor at any moment in time. The best channel can be the cheapest one for you or the most effective one on the stage of the journey that a visitor is in, or maybe the one that the visitor engages most on. So it's not an easy game, but um, I will share some tips what we do today. So either way, personalization and automation together, that's where you make the difference. It's like one plus one is three. Um, using website personalization, you make your website visits better, and the chances are higher that someone converts and subscribes um, to, to a lead gen form so that you have them in your email database. When you're doing marketing automation, you can bring more people back to your website because you can send them emails. So both make each other stronger. And also, um, um, get, getting data from one platform to the other. So the website personalization catch, captures really rich behavior and intent data, which can be interesting to use in your emails. And vice versa, email and campaign data can be relevant to do website personalization differently. So it's both combined, that's the best solution. And it works. Um, that's why we believe so strongly in this. For Dropsolid, we saw our email rates, our email open rates double um, when we started to personalize our emails. Even the click rate for some personalized emails um, was four times as high as the normal audience. And for one specific segment, it was even 10 times higher than the default audience. So we believe it works and it pays off. Now, how did we do it? Uh, let me give you some insights in what we are doing um, with some uh, with one example uh, user journey. So here we have Amy. Amy is a marketing manager and she's looking for marketing automation. 
So she comes across one of our ads um, and she clicks on it to land on our website. So she sees the page on our website, uh, which is already per personalized for marketeers. Um, she clicks through to go to a blog article. So she reads some content on the website, uh, but we would really like her to see this particular white paper. Um, she didn't see it on the landing page. So regardless of which pages she's now navigating through, because she came in via the marketing automation keyword, we would like her to see this. So the chatbot is a good way to bring it to her attention. She downloads it, she gets nicely into Motic with a nurturing campaign afterwards, you know that. And from that moment on, she also gets her personalized newsletters. Here is actually an example of our latest newsletter where you see three different versions with a different introduction, um, personalized from a different sender, um, and it has they have different content. So the order of the content we personalize, the subject line, obviously, which increases the chances um, of opening your emails, and also the articles that we have there is, um, is what we do for personalization. And then, um, because Amy really turned out to be a valuable visitor for us, we also use her visitor segment to build lookalike audience on social media so that we get more Amy's to our website and then, again, we increase our audience. That's a simple example of one of the user journeys that uh, we have created. Now, how did we do it? How did we build it? Um, that's what I will explain in the coming minutes. So um, this is Maybe a bit of a complex scheme, but let me explain. So we build it using different tools. On top, you see the customer data platform. That is you know me um, that we, we use for it. And I like to call it, that's the brains. Um, all the data that we have uh, around our customers is collected there. And it's connected with all our owned media. So all our channels are connected to you know me. Our website is connected. Our marketing automation is connected. And also the chatbot is connected. So the segments that you build using the data from the behavioral data from all your different channels, you build them in Unomi and you use them on all your channels. But also um, you can use them to um, build lookalike audiences or to target or retarget audiences with, uh, with ads. So these channels are all your own channels. Um, and then you have your paid channels, um, which you can use when people don't come to your own channels anymore or not yet. So over the next slides, I will explain each part of this scheme in a bit more detail. So the first part is the customer data platform. It's the brain of our, um, of our journeys. It captures all the data. It makes it's it's where you make the segments. It's where you make the decisions, and from here you pass them on to to your different channels. Now, how does the customer data platform work? Um, it's not that complex actually. Um, it puts a script on, script on your website, um, and it puts first party cookies. So it captures really deep website behavior, much more than what you can also do in the, in Motic. By linking this with Motic, though. Um, it, it, it makes it much more powerful because once people um, have been on your website on a certain device and they click on an email on that device, you know who they are. You can link the email address to the website visit. And when they click on an email on another device, um, you can also link the behavior on that other device to the same person. So it makes your, um, yeah, your profiles much more valuable uh, and you can really identify people over devices when you link your customer data platform with Mautic. Um, so here is where you capture most of the data. So here is where you will be building your audience segments. Um, for Dropsolid, we build four segments that we use across all of our channels. Um, four is an uh, an easy number, let's say, so it's still um, possible to maintain it um, very nicely. Uh, and four was also, um, so the four segments we're having is technical users, marketing users, business users, and applicants. So we have really different messaging for the different types of users, and they also have quite different behavior on our website. So for us, it was easy to, um, to do personalization and to build journeys for those four different segments. 
The next step is the marketing automation part. Here is where you will be using those segments that you just built in your customer data platform for newsletter personalization or for nurturing scenarios or retargeting even. So it's always the same four segments that we keep um, getting back. On the website, same thing. We're using the same four segments. We're capturing also more and more behavior and we're using it for website personalization. In the chatbot, same thing. So we also make the segments available in the chatbot to initiate playbooks or to split playbooks at a certain uh, point in time. But what we also do here is once someone identifies um, via the chatbot because they want to download something or they will want to make an appointment. So once we capture the chatbot captures their email address, we also push it back to Motic using a, a forms so that we can um, not only have the data in our marketing database, but that we can also do a follow-up scenario or a follow-up campaign from um, that specific form. It's actually a hidden form, which is called by the, um, by the Drift API. And the last part of our scheme was the ads. Um, so you can also make the, the customer data platform segments available in Facebook and LinkedIn as segments for retargeting, but you can also build lookalike audiences on it um, to get more people, more relevant audiences to your website. So before jumping in our lessons learned, let me jump in a, in a quick demonstration. So what you see here is the customer data platform of DropSalt, where we are on the profiles um, screen. So here is where you see what data is being captured on your profiles. So you see the profiles coming in, you see how the segments are divided, and you can, for example, also see where your visitors come from um, based on their IPs. And here is where you would where you build those segments. Um, let me show you a quick example. So you can either build segments with simple rules. Um, so this is, for example, a segment selecting people visiting us not from Ghent, um, which who have their language uh, set to Dutch and who visit a particular part of our website. Another example, actually the one I was showing you before where Amy was in, um, a bit of the same thing. So um, either she, she was on our website on the sales and marketing part, or she came in from a UTM campaign called marketing, or marketing automation, or digital marketing, so whatever contains marketing, or she is in one of our automated segments, um, which I will explain in a minute. So this way you can build different rules to put people in segments, and these segments are the ones you make available for all your channels to do personalization with. The last part of the segment I just created, um, it comes from discovery. So either you build fixed rules or you can have um, our AI and machine learning engine detect behavioral patterns. Um, so let me quickly jump into one of the models previously created. So what our um, CDP does is it, um, it captures all the behavior and our machine learning tries to define or to find, in this case, four different groups that have a specific behavioral pattern that's different from each other. Um, and what you see here is the keywords they typically interact with. And if you see here, interesting word clouds, you can also create segments from that. So it's not people following a specific path on your website. It's not people doing really exactly the same things, but they are engaging with um, specific content throughout your website. Um, so this way, it's also a very um, e easy way, in fact, um, to capture really specific behavior on your website um, and capture really specific segments that are sometimes very hard to, um, to capture other. All right, so you've built your segments um, in your customer data platform. And then um, let me show you one of the settings is where you integrate it with Motic. It's very simple. Here you define, you can build custom fields in Motic. And here you define the fields where these personalization segments should be stored. So any person that you have in your Motic marketing automation database, 
and that's where I'm uh, looking at right here. So this is my own profile. I have these fields here. It's called CP segment. It's a custom field. And for me, it's labeled marketing. Um, I can be in different segments at the same time. Then it will become a separated in that field. And you can use this as any profile field to build segments or to split campaigns or to personalize content in your emails. And the same thing happens in our case for our chatbot. Um, so we're using Drift as a chatbot on our website. And in Drift, you can also build segments. Um, so you see here, we have already the four uh, personalization segments here. But when you would be defining a new segment, it's the same thing. Um, you can use profile attributes. And the um, drop solid personalization segment is just like we did in the Nautic. A a profile attribute that you can use to, um, yeah, to build segments, and then you can use those segments again in the in the playbooks. So, three lessons that we learned. Um, the first one is ask pivot questions, balance personalization with automation. It's really impossible to create a perfect journey or a funnel for each individual visitor. It's an interactive game. You cannot control how visitors engage with your brand. You cannot control where they click and which page they see next. So our tip is to balance between personalization and automation and not losing yourself in over complex and unmanageable scenarios. So ask pivot questions. An example of a pivot question is, do you have kids? It's a very simple example. It doesn't really make sense for drop solid, but I think you get the picture. When you ask that question and someone says yes, you know you can tease them with um, going out on a trip with your kids or doing things with your kids or um, selling them um, specific products that you need when you have kids. When you don't have kids, you have all you have really different needs and. Um, and things you're looking for. So that type of questions can really, it divides your audience in two different groups where you can have a very targeted message towards which will appeal to them, um, but also which distincts them from, from the other group. So you get to the largest possible group that needs a different treatment for them to feel like you know them personally. And try to start with less than five um, structural segments that you um, that you use. Our second lesson learned is you need a brain. Um, the segmentation logic in Motic is limited. Um, you need a brain to make those decisions if you want to go on the channel. A customer data platform is well fit for that, uh, as it can make as it can take data in from different sources and different channels, and it can easily feed all your outbound channels with the same intelligence, with the same segments so that you can create really a consistent um, user journey. We are using Unomi as a customer data platform. It's open source, it's affordable, and it really does what it, what it needs to do. Our third lesson learned is that less pages and less emails does not mean less work, but it means more work. Um, sending less emails is better. Um, if you make them more relevant and you send only the emails that someone really uh, is looking forward to. But ensuring that every visitor only gets the content that is fit for him or her is, is really more work. Um, automation makes things feasible and manageable, but it requires a well thought out strategy, well defined segmentation, and still it's, it's a lot of work. So, don't lose yourself in making it too complicated from the start. Start with simple experiments, just a few segments, um, and, and learn from that and keep making things um, better along the way. Voila, that's, um, that's my part of the, of the talking today. Um, I'm really looking forward to your, to your input put to your feedback, um, to hearing if you have similar challenges and um, if you would have any questions for me. So shoot. Hi again, everybody. So uh, I saw in the chat already that there's uh, some questions. Uh, the first is about uh, the GDPR. 
Lane, you're telling us about uh, tracking data uh, and, and putting it in uh, you know me. So um, how do you confirm to these laws and others that are similar? Yeah, indeed, it's a really good question and an important thing to consider when you um, when you start doing that. Um, actually, it's it's like with all the other scripts that we put on our website um, for Drop Solid, we we use the cookie consent module um, that we have actually also contributed uh, in Drupal. So we're asking to all of our visitors their consent to um, to capture different kind of of, of data. Um, and the Unomi cookie is only set when they uh, they or the Unomi scripts and the cookie is only set when they accept the uh, the analytical cookies. So just like like all the others, um, obviously you need to do that. It's it's a bit the same for the for the Motic uh, script as well, since Motic is also capturing um, user behavior on your website. So for Unomi, it's the same thing. Indeed, you need to ask uh, their consent, and if they don't give it you cannot track their behavior. There's another uh, question in the same direction. Um, since more and more browsers, and also uh, I know from iOS, uh, are preventing third parties from uh, from tracking you, uh, how do you see that influence uh, uh, marketeers and email marketing with the CDP? Um, yes, there will be some influence. But in this case, uh, we're putting first party cookies so, so far, that's still allowed uh, on, on the different browsers. So there is no uh, the, no limitations to that extent just yet. Um, both the, the Motic and the Unomi cookie are, uh, are first party on, the, on your own domains. So no limitations on that aspect yet, at least. So that's especially uh, a plus to have it in your first party data and host it yourself like Motic. It won't be blocked. Indeed. Currently. Yeah, great. <laughs> it's a nice, uh, nice benefit. Um, so you're introducing the concept of uh, of a CDP here, a customer data uh, platform that you combine with uh, with Maltic to en enhance its features. But for a lot of uh, us, it's quite new what's what's happening here. And I don't know from other agencies that they're using uh, Maltic as well as a sort of CDP by putting a lot of data in it, right? And 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 trying to. Yeah, segment everything and, and, and change all the flows. Um, so, so what's exactly the difference and the, and the added benefit by adding you know me? Yeah, um, indeed, you can use Motic as a sort of CDP as well, um, at least from the start. Um, it does exactly the same thing. It captures behavior on email, on your, your website. You can create segments and you can use those segments uh, in your email campaigns and in, in the rest that, that you do in Motic. The added value of using an additional CDP on top is if you want to bring in much more data and you need more fields and you need more flexibility, then at some point, you will run into the limitations of Motic, being uh, the number of fields or, or uh, the ease of integrating with, with a lot of other tools. Um, so that's when uh, it might be a time to look into a real CDP um, that is built for a lot of integrations, a lot of data, uh, high volumes. Um, and also, in, in the case of you, us using you know me together with the Drupal website and Motic um, as well, is that it's very easy to personalize your content inside Drupal. Um, there's also uh, a you know me module um, or plugin for Drupal, so that on each part of your web page content inside Drupal, you can say this piece of content should be available to any visitor or this or this piece should only be visible to a specific segment. Um, so it's it's much easier to do the personalization part um, with with that uh, nat yeah, native uh, Drupal module uh, for Unomi. And the third reason why you could look into Unomi on top of Motic is the, the AI engine that I showed that really tracks those behavioral patterns and um, in some cases makes it possible to detect r interesting audiences that you can very, uh, or which could be very hard to detect using predefined rules. Like you also have in Motic, you build segments using rules or putting people in a segment from a certain campaign. Um, 
but the fact that your AI can detect those behavioral patterns, that's also uh, an added value that you have in, in Unomi, or at least uh, the, the customer data platform that we at DropSolid built on top of the, the Unomi engine. Um, so that could also be an added value on, um, on using a specific CDP besides Motic. Thanks, Lane. So I, I hear uh, multiple things. One of the things I, I understood from this is that with Unomi, you can collect lots of data, more than uh, in, in, in Motic where it would possibly uh, reach the limits of, of Maltec, right? If you collect that much data. So mm -hmm. you're talking about big data, um, which could be a scalability problem in Maltec if you try to do it all in there. Indeed. All right, and um, that's good. And we get also, uh, besides only email, the email channel, which you can personalize with Maltec, you can also more easily uh, personalize other channels like your own website, right? Yeah. Okay, very, very, very nice. So there are some more questions about this. So um, the audience asks about uh, what would be the investment or, or how hard would it be to, to start with Unomi and uh, where should I start? Uh, what kind of investment should I think about? Uh, does it replace things? Should I start with both or can I start with one or the other? Um, like in, in one of the slides that I showed, the one plus one is three slide. Um, of course, you can start with one or the other, depending on where your uh, highest need is, or, or um, they, they really are complementary. You can obviously start with just Motic and use it as your CDP for a while until you run into the limitations or until you want to go really in the website personalization end where Maltec has some capabilities, but not um, as, as, as deep as you know me. Otherwise, you can also start using just um, the personalization on your website and adding the email channel and, and using Maltec later. So it, it depends on the use case, what is the most interesting way to start. Typically, you start with one and then later on add the other one, just taking it step by step. Um, in terms of investment or onboarding, with Unomi on top of Motic, it's actually not that um, not like a big bang or really a huge project. Um, actually, it's um, it's also an open source tool, so the investment is is reasonable, I'd say. Um, and the onboarding is also fairly easy. Um, it's just one script that you need to integrate on your website to start capturing the behavior. Um, it, it takes about, uh, we always say, two weeks to have captured enough data to start looking into the data and, and make some conclusions um, and start building those segments. Um, and then the integration with, with between Unomi and Drupal, there is a, a Drupal module um, that you can uh, add to your website to start doing the, the Drupal personalization. Um, and in Unomi, there's also a Motic um, feature, actually, to link it to your to your Motic and to say, I want to use these and these fields in my Motic contact database to put the Unomi segments in that a contact is in. So it's the onboarding can is is rather light, I'd say. Um, but obviously, the the big work comes into defining really the strategy for your segmentation and then putting that uh, into action. It's more the, the think work than than the execution that is um, typically the hardest part. You're still on mute, Daniel. Daniel, we can't hear you. At least I can't. Thanks. Um, yeah, I was uh, <laughs> trying to, to to summarize it for myself, and I said, uh, if I have the money, I can just go to a dealer and buy a car. But uh, learning to drive a car will take some uh, some time, right? Indeed. <laughs> um, so there's another question. Um, uh, in one of your slides, you showed a uh, chat, right? As one of the channels. Mm -hmm. uh, do you also know about any uh, open source solution that uh, is easily integrated or that, that would you, you would advise uh, in this uh, scenario? Um, unfortunately, not. 
uh, drift was was uh, being used at Ropsolid when I arrived, and we haven't looked into that part uh, into replacing it with an open source solution. There might be, but I I don't I don't know. Sorry for that. <laughs> the community can find out. I hope so. <laughs> or we need to build a build one. So I think we are through most of the questions. Um, we can hang here uh, for a couple of more uh, minutes if uh, if there are any other questions. Uh, and otherwise, uh, we'll see each other in the, in the next sessions. Uh, for now, Lane, thank you for the preparation of this presentation and giving these answers. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. All right. And if there would be any questions later, indeed, you can reach me in the network area or you know, via social channels, whatever, you know where to find me. <laughs> Great. Thanks, so Lane. Thank you. Bye-bye. Enjoy your day. Bye.